Welcome to Kyogen's Bench Tutorial on Endotoxins. For the next few minutes, we'll have a look at the influence of endotoxin levels on transfection efficiency. This bench tutorial aims to provide a comprehensive overview of endotoxins. We'll discuss the effects of endotoxins on different cell lines in transfection experiments, examine how endotoxins can be effectively removed from purified plasma DNA to avoid co-transfection, and evaluate the critical parameters to consider in transfection experiments. Transfection of eukaryotic cells is one of the most important technologies in the study of gene expression in different tissues. Cells or cell lines of the tissue of interest are transfected with a certain gene or part of the gene. The DNA of interest is most commonly cloned in a vector and the resulting construct is proliferated in E. coli and then purified. The purified plasma DNA can contain endotoxins from the bacterial cell, which are co-purified. These endotoxins can negatively influence the transfection of eukaryotic cells, decreasing the transfection efficiency. What are endotoxins, where are they located, and why do they have a toxic effect? Endotoxins are lipopolysaccharides, also known as LPS, and are located in the outer membrane of gram-negative bacteria. In humans, they stimulate an immunogenic response to a bacterial infection. Endotoxins are made of a highly conserved lipid part and a polysaccharide, as shown in the figure. The phospholipid on the right-hand side of the figure is the part responsible for the toxic effect. The polysaccharide, which you can see on the left-hand side, has structural functions. Why are endotoxins so important and how do they influence eukaryotic cells? The effects are very complex and can vary significantly between different cells. One very obvious effect is membrane damage. Due to the fact that LPS is a membrane component, it can also interact with the structure of other membranes. This can influence the function of the membrane and can lead to morphological changes. Further interactions are due to the structural nature of the molecule. The phosphate groups of the inner core can interact with cationic proteins of the transfected cell, and the fatty acid chain can interact with lipid membranes and hydrophilic regions of proteins. Endotoxins can cause mitogenic effects by activating cell division of B cells, for example, as well as inhibitory effects on cell division, depending on the origin of the endotoxin and on the concentration. In relation to transfection, how sensitive are different cell lines and how do they react to endotoxin exposure? The first rule of thumb is that permanent cell lines derived from carcinogenic sources are less sensitive than primary cells or cells in suspension. The difference between these two types is that permanent cells have undergone a high number of passages and are theoretically immortal. Primary cells are derived from fresh tissue and have gone through only a few passages. They are more differentiated than permanent cell lines and not as well characterized. Primary cells are very sensitive to endotoxins. The sensitivity of permanent cells can vary and depends on the cell type. For example, the human umbilical vein endothelial cell line is a more robust cell line, whereas the Chinese hamster ovary fibroblast cell line is sensitive and the human hepatoma cell line is very sensitive. LPS is released when bacteria die or are destroyed. This is the case during plasmid purification and during this process endotoxins can be co-purified. During plasmid purification using a silica matrix, endotoxins can be co-purified because the fatty acyl chains of the LPS are hydrophobic and are able to bind to the silica membrane, competing with the DNA molecules. Just like DNA, LPS has negative phosphate groups that bind anion exchange matrices during plasmid purification using this technology. From what we have learnt, endotoxins have to be removed from plasmid DNA to guarantee optimal results. There are two ways to do this. One method involves removal of endotoxins after DNA purification and the other involves removal during DNA purification. If the DNA is already prepared, there are three very common methods used to remove endotoxins. Salt-alcohol precipitation of DNA from solution removes salt, 
guanidine and endotoxins. This is not a quantitative method, but may be sufficient to improve transfection, especially for cells that are not extremely sensitive to endotoxins. A simple and effective DNA extraction method uses Triton X detergent. At temperatures below 20 degrees C, Triton X will dissolve in aqueous solutions. At temperatures above 20 degrees C, the detergent separates into two phases where lipophilic endotoxin partitions to the organic phase. Repeated extractions, followed by isopropanol precipitation of the collected aqueous phase, results in a reduction of endotoxin levels to less than 0.2 EU per micrograms plasma DNA. An alternative method involves chromatography against polymyxin B sulfate, or PMB. PMB binds to LPS with high affinity. Column chromatography is commonly accomplished using a peristaltic pump to add DNA in TE buffer at pH 7.4 to the pre-packed PMB agarose matrix. The DNA endotoxin containing solution is recirculated through the equilibrated column for 12 to 24 hours. The eluate is collected and DNA is precipitated with salt and alcohol. This method removes similar amounts of endotoxin as those achieved by extraction using Triton X, but is a more time-consuming method. It is much easier and more effective to eliminate endotoxins directly during the DNA purification procedure. Anion exchange purification, combined with an endotoxin removal buffer wash, as provided with Kyogen's endo-free plasmid kits, leads to endotoxin levels of less than 0.1 EU per microgram DNA, which is suitable for very sensitive cells, such as human umbilical vein endothelial cells. Endotox endotoxin levels between 1 to 3 EU per microgram DNA, sufficient for transfection of sensitive cells, such as human hepatoma cells, can be achieved using Kyogen Plasmid Plus kits. If we rank the different plasma DNA qualities related to their suitability for transfection, we have on the lower end of the purification scale, molecular biology grade DNA, purified using selective adsorption to silica gel membranes under controlled ionic conditions. This purified plasma DNA is sufficient for cloning and transformation of bacterial cells, but not for transfection. Cesium chloride density gradient centrifugation a very time-consuming method, and anion exchange chromatography deliver plasmid DNA recommended for transfection of robust and sensitive cells. The same is true for Kyogen Plasmid Plus chemistry, which can ensure even lower endotoxin levels. Use of anion exchange chromatography in combination with an endotoxin removal buffer results in DNA of the highest quality with lowest endotoxin levels suitable for transfection into very sensitive cell lines, as well as primary and suspension cells. To measure the efficiency of transfection, PCMV beta, including the beta-galactosidase gene, was transfected into highly passaged human hepatoma cells. Beta-galactosidase activity was measured using the beta-gal assay. As shown in the figure, we can observe a correlation between different parameters quality of DNA, amount of DNA, and amount of transfection reagent. The figure shows that endotoxin-free DNA gives the best result in different experiments. But the DNA amount and amount of transfection reagent also play a significant role. The optimal ratio must be calculated. In the experimental data shown here, very sensitive human hepatoma cells were used. An increase in transfection efficiency by using increased amounts of plasmid and effectine transfection reagent is observed. If the amount of effectine transfection reagent was to be increased to 4 microliters, we would observe an opposite effect. Despite low endotoxin levels, the transfection efficiency would be reduced again. This is because too much transfection reagent causes additional cellular stress. We'll now discuss the effect of additional factors such as cell culture and transfection method. With regards to cell culture, 
The best practice is to use cells with a low number of cell cycles to ensure an unchanged genotype. The optimal cell confluence is around 40 to 60% at the time point of transfection. To obtain cells with normal cell metabolism, it's recommended to split them 24 hours before transfection. The transfection method must be evaluated to ensure minimal cytotoxicity. Non-liposomal lipid methods cause minimal stress to cells. Reduced stress results in higher survival rates, as shown in the figure on the upper right. Increased efficiency can also be reached if the transfection reagent allows the use of serum during transfection. As discussed earlier, reduced amounts of transfection reagent as well as smaller amounts of DNA can have a positive effect. The ratio between plasmid DNA and transfection reagent has to be evaluated. In addition to endotoxin levels, the amount of supercoiled DNA can also facilitate the DNA uptake. As discussed earlier, reduced amounts of transfection reagent as well as smaller amounts of DNA can have a positive effect. The ratio between plasmid DNA and transfection reagent has to be evaluated. In addition to endotoxin levels, the amount of supercoiled DNA can also facilitate the DNA uptake. In conclusion, transfection efficiency is influenced by a variety of different factors. Three key points should be noted. Firstly, low endotoxin levels should be maintained to avoid artificial effects and cellular stress. Secondly, the response of cells to endotoxins can vary between different cell lines and a critical level of endotoxins is hard to predict. And finally, low endotoxin levels are essential to accurately study the impact of the transfected protein. Thank you for participating in this bench tutorial. We hope that you have found it useful.